guys, how's it going? My name is Jeff with the Collector Car Network, and today we have a 2023 Nissan Z Performance. And I am going to go through the process of what better way to start a car review than by putting the car in launch control, right? So, start building it up, let it off. Today's video is sponsored by Land Air Sea. Keep tabs on all your valuable assets from the palm of your hand. Remember, with Land Air Sea, theft is temporary. Visit LandAirSea.com to order your Land Air Sea GPS unit for your classic vehicle. So this is the 2023 Nissan Z Performance Edition, which is really important to note out because the Performance Edition features some extra features over the base model that'll make a significant difference and I'll talk about as we go throughout this video. First, we're gonna start with the exterior of the car, then we're gonna move on to the drivetrain, and then we'll move on to the interior, and of course, at the end, take the car for a drive. So. First, the car we'll be looking at today is the Performance Edition, as I said, and this particular car comes priced out at $54,055. And you're probably wondering, what is that gorgeous color? This car is finished in two-tone passion red. So we have like a piano black roof over this gorgeous red color that is a little bit lighter than Mazda's red, but it looks really good on this car. Dare I say, this is probably my favorite color that comes optioned on the Z. There's actually only three colors that don't come with the two-tone black roof. Now, personally, I like the roof, so I don't mind that at all, but this car is gorgeous and it has a lot of awesome retro looks and styling that have come from previous Z models. So let's go ahead and let's start talking about everything that's going on here. These headlights, of course, are inspired by the early Zs that you would have seen with even the running lights, of course, trying to represent those silver, um, the circular halogens and stuff that you would have seen on the original cars. And then we have even this little buff intake to make the car look a little bit more aggressive and stout, but of course throws back to even some of the stripes you would have seen on the Zs and various models. We have the new Nissan badge, which of course went through some of their sort of rebranding of the company. And then of course this gray uh, grill here, which has been a little bit changed from what we first saw when the car was unveiled. And it looked really big in the photos they took because they took the photo so low, but I can tell you in person, this car is way prettier than a lot of the original press looks. And especially in this color, man, does it look good. So. Coming to the front here, once you start to take a look at the side profile of the front of the car, you see it has this very long, sharp, pointy nose. And that, of course, is all going back to the 240Z, which was a big deal when that car came out. And coming to the side here, we have a really cool feature. These are 19-inch Ray's wheels. Ray is very famous in the aftermarket community for all of the wheels they build, so to see them go into making the production wheels for the Z makes me very excited, and they look very good. Ours have a dark finish on them. That is a nice contrast, and even kind of complements the black that's on the car itself. We also have some red brake calipers and some really good sized brake discs. The front here are 255s and staggered with 275s in the back, sitting on a set of bridge stones. So moving along, we have our black, we have some nice sporty styling, and then we have these beautiful door handles. These door handles were designed by Nissan with the intent of, of course, being attractive to the air. So they're swept into the body, you don't notice them. You have a little button here that is for your keyless entry, and then more black, we have our typical Nissan Z Fastback, of course, this shape being very similar to what you would find on the other Z models. And we of course have this really good looking Z badge, which is obviously retro inspired, and I think really does a good job of kind of giving back to that Nissan heritage. Now this car is about 80% new parts. The chassis is actually based off the 370Z, but has been modified with some different bits and features a lot of aluminum components as well to keep this car fairly lightweight, coming in around 3,486 pounds for the dry curb weight. 
Now, coming to the rear, we have some more Z influence here. The most obvious being the taillights. The taillights are inspired by the Z32 300ZX. They've essentially been shrunken down and sort of formatted to fit the car. Another thing we have back here is something that is part of the performance edition, and that's gonna be the spoiler. So the spoiler is more important than just looks. The Nissan engineers realize that the car has maybe a little bit of uh, rear lift at very, very high speed. So odds are the spoiler will never come in handy for anything that you'll do in your normal everyday driving. But if you were taking the car to a track or even going for a top speed run, this spoiler is good to have. And this car is electronically limited to about 155 miles per hour. So that's where that's at. We got our, another badge, another Z, and of course some piano black type. Uh, then we got our two dual exhaust with sort of a baby diffuser um, that I can't imagine is that functional. The last thing I want to show you on the exterior is over here. So with the design of this car, obviously Nissan spent a lot of time on this and the car does look fantastic, but they wanted everything to be perfect so much so that we have the fuel door here, which sits on the passenger side rear quarter panel. And if we open it up, you can see it's a good size fist for scale and this has actually been curved and formatted to make sure it fits the body beautifully. So when you have this down, it's not really noticeable. It doesn't take away from the car and it looks really good. So with that, now that we've taken a look at the exterior, let's go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's going on under there. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the engine bay of the 2023 Nissan Z. So you'll see our Nissan badge and V6 twin turbo. So this is a three liter twin turbo V6 cranking out 400 horsepower and 350 pound feet of torque. Now the important part is we've actually seen this engine before. This engine is also found in the Q50 and Q60 Red Sport with the same power figures. So we can expect some different, lots of tunability obviously being that this is a twin turbo engine. So if you are into aftermarket modding your cars, this has a lot of potential anything with turbos these days you can always turn it up so this is obviously a very versatile engine especially in a car that weighs less than 3500 pounds so you know that this is fast you get a zero to 60 in just about 3.7 seconds so this thing is blisteringly quick more importantly what else you have is the transmission so this particular car is fitted with the nine speed automatic transmission but nissan is on team save the manual so there's also a six speed manual transmission that has rev matching that can be turned on and off of course both cars also come with the launch control option, which as we showed you earlier is very cool, especially if you're gonna take it to the strip or you just wanna have more fun with it. It's a really cool option. Another cool thing, aside from some of the engine covers, the brake fluid and battery are both hidden under covers to probably spruce up the engine bay, look at a little bit better. But one of the coolest things is the fact that this has a factory strut bar for extra chassis rigidity. So that's really nice. That'll help keep the car more upright, especially if you're taking it to track days and just looking for that generally more sporty experience. This is gonna help with that. So very cool, less upgrade you need to do from the factory because Nissan is trying to make this the most performance experience you get in a beautiful looking car and a total package. So with that, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the interior. Okay, so now we're on the interior of the Z. And first of all, this is a really, really cool interior. So we have this red and black color scheme going on. All of the red you see is actually leather. And then in the middle of the seats, we have a synthetic suede. There's also a variety of other uh, black leather components and plastic along with some other cool sort of graphite colored trims throughout the car. Of course, being a sports car, we have a very fighter cockpit inspired styling. Of course, with this set of three gauges on the top that look at you, which brings up a really Really important point. So on the left here, we have a boost gauge. In the middle, we actually have a turbo speed gauge. And that's probably something you haven't seen in a car before. And the reason for that is because the turbo speed gauge comes from some sensors that actually monitor the turbos to allow the engine to be more responsive. And that's something we've really never seen in a car before ever, because most of the time, a turbo is really an uncontrolled object that's while it's spooling up, it has the danger of over speeding. So what most manufacturers will end up doing is they'll end up dialing the turbo back, accounting for some extra errors, and then leaving some extra performance on the table, and of course some of that enjoyment because they don't want the turbo to explode, which makes sense. But with the sensors that are on the turbos in this Nissan, Nissan is able to get a better idea of what the turbos are doing and therefore increase the responsiveness of this car, which is a really cool technology feature that you won't find in any other turbocharged sports car. Moving on, we have our main center console area here. 
We have a nine inch display in this car. There's also an eight inch display that's available in other cars. One thing I really like is that this is a touch screen, but you also have all of these physical buttons down here that are available for navigating, which is really cool because as much as I think touch screens are great and they're helpful, it's nice to have buttons, especially when you're in a car and you don't want to be distracted while driving. Down just below here, we have our climate control, which actually has an auto version, or of course you can manually adjust things yourself depending on what you're looking for. We also have a USB type C and a standard USB port down here, along with some extra storage. We have our engine start button sits just here. Next to our drive mode select on the other side, which we have standard and sport, which I'll talk about more later as we get into the driving portion of the video. In the middle here, we have our shift select for our nine speed auto, which can be a little bit awkward at first, admittedly, but when you get used to it, it's actually no problem at all, and it's actually quite pleasant to use. Another interesting thing that we have is this. This is a normal e-brake. No electronic e-brake in this car like you'll find in some of your other sort of plain Jane cars, but they've chosen, knowing their buyer base, to stick to a mechanical e-brake. In the middle here, we actually have our heated seat select, so you can go ahead and just turn it off with these clicky select switches here. And then next to that, we have a option button that where we can actually pop the rear hatch should you be loading things or have somebody come in to drop things off. We have a cup holder here in the center, and then we have our adjustable sort of armrest, cubby storage, whatever you want to call it, that also hides another cup holder. So if you wanted to slide that back, you can do so or pop it open to take a look at your storage options. Another thing, this steering wheel is so great. It actually has the circular sort of horn button style that you would find on the retro heritage of the Z, specifically looking back at the 240s. So that's a really cool touch. And of course, with the classic Z logo in the middle, it gives you lots of feel good intentions when you get into this car. We have some really cool vent setups as well. I like the way that we have one of the vents is actually in the door. And of course, it's the circular type that's adjustable. And the cool thing about that is if you're ever driving, you know, you have the vents that are kind of blowing right under your hands, having it over here on the door gets it a little bit further out of the way so you're not blowing the air into your hands and that air is actually getting on the U. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. And then to the left, we have the traction control off button. Something very important to note if you're gonna be driving a sports car like the Z. And then of course we have all of your standard expected controls in the steering wheel volume skip. Uh, you can manage your four options that run through the display as well that we'll get into while we're driving. And then of course you have your cruise control and some of your other driver assists and all the sort of freedom, so to speak. And on the door, we just have the mirror adjusts and the fact that both windows on both sides of the car are actually auto so you can spend less time managing both while you're driving the car and a nice metal finish on these as well a really cool feature just from a safety standpoint is because this is a fastback car some people can find that hard to see out of but nissan has actually added the blind spot monitors are right here inside of the car just in front of the mirrors so they're really easy to see the blind spot monitors will tell you when there's somebody specifically in the back sort of three quarter of your car, which is obviously where you want to know it the most with the sort of fastback version of the car, all your programmable stuff here, all your standard sort of car stuff essentially really. But one of the other cool parts, this car does not have a back seat, but what it does have is we have our back hatch storage and then we have a giant bar. That giant bar adds rigidity to the car. So that's helping even help, essentially the same thing as the strut bar in the front, that's helping the front. This is more so helping the center of the car and the rear, everything stays solid and rigid. So if you're using this car in a very aggressive sporty intention, the car will stay stiff and therefore better to be more responsive and handle more efficiently, less roll, things like that. So. Looking back here, we actually have some extra pockets as well. The driver's manual gets stored in this little back pocket just behind the seats that folds down. So it's a little bit of more of a hidden storage if you wanted that. And then you've got the hatch storage, as I mentioned earlier. So with that, that's a quick look at the interior of this car. It's pretty simple, eight speaker Bose sound system. That'll do the job. It sounds just fine without being too much. And of course, everything is right where you need it to be within reach, within visual range of the driver. And yeah, without that, I think what we need to do now really is talk about what it's like to drive the Nissan Z. You can hear there's a little bit of that artificial sound sort of pumped in here as well, which is pretty interesting because there's actually a couple things going on in the interior while you're driving. So we have the Bose sound system, but one of the other things that it actually does is it has an active noise canceling system for some of the other uh, loud outside sounds that it also equips with the interior sound that it's projecting out. So that's kind of an interesting feature. 
The next thing we should talk about is drive modes. So as I navigate the suburban sprawl of Phoenix here, Let's talk about the two drive modes. So the car, of course, is in standard. Um, from the get-go, every time you start the car, it'll always be in standard. And then you have the option to switch it up into sport mode, which is, of course, where you'll find traction control. So what that does is once you put the car in sport mode, what that'll do is that'll actually stiffen up the steering wheel just a little bit um, to make it a little bit more precise and you feel like you could be have more control over the driving experience of the car, which is kind of nice. And then we're gonna do a freeway pull here real fast. It sounds good. This is a very good sounding V6. So now we're getting on the freeway. As you can hear, there's really not a ton of super obnoxious noise here. You could definitely have a conversation at freeway speeds, which is nice. It's also a good time that I should just quickly point out that this car gets a combined uh, 22 miles per gallon, about 28 on the freeway. So it's not too bad for gas mileage either, as long as you can keep your foot out of it and not stay on the turbos. But back to the drive modes. So in sport mode, it basically makes the steering wheel a bit heavier, increases the, the feel that you get. But one of the other things it does is it also heightens the responsiveness of the engine. So the car will kick up, stay a little bit in the RPMs a little bit higher, just rev everything out, and then even take advantage of some of those sensors and the turbos that we talked about earlier. So that's what you get out of your drive mode. But for the most part, I imagine um, from my experience with the car, it's a lot easier just to keep the car in standard when you're not driving it super hard because you'll also get significantly better gas mileage that way. And the car will do a better job shifting just to make it a little bit smoother for your every day city driving. But the minute you get yourself on a curvy road or on the track, absolutely put it in sport. That's what it's for. So from a driving perspective, the view is actually really good. There is a little bit of a blind spot, but like we mentioned earlier, they do have the blind spot monitors, which help a lot. So I haven't been too worried about the way that's set up because the lights have been fantastic. And we have a nice digital display here. One of the other cool things is when you put the car in manual mode, you have these GTR inspired uh, paddle shifters on each side of the car. There's actually shift lights that sit just above the speedometer and the tachometer on the car as well. And so the car will build up the shift lights and you can watch that as you're driving. And so that way you don't need to actually keep your eyes on it, but you can see the peripheral colors as it changes to red to let you know when to shift the car, which is another cool thing, especially suited for track day experiences. On top of that, you do have four different options. There's a multifunctional display you have here that you can adjust. So you have things like tire pressure that kind of give you an overall view of the car. You can then roll it down to another boost gauge so it mimics the, the actual gauge that you have sitting on the dash and then you have a g-force which is of course perfect for the track and then you have a menu which allows you to adjust the the upshift indicators that i had mentioned earlier so overall driving wise it's got a little nice tone to it that sounds really good and like i mentioned it is quiet in the cabin it is a fantastic sports car that's available with a manual transmission so what's better than all of the options that come equipped with this? And it pays heritage to a long lineage of beautiful Nissan Z cars. So you get a fun driving experience that provides sporty, quick acceleration whenever you need it. Everything is very usable and functional in the car. It's a very nice interior option with cool turbo performance and heightened rev out ability that you won't find in any other turbocharged sports car currently. Nissan did a fantastic job and it shows the amount of enthusiasm that they went for and what kind of person they want to be driving this car. It's built so that you can rev it out and they maximized the feel of the engine. Personally, it doesn't even feel like a turbocharged car. The way the car picks up, it's very natural that it might as well be a naturally aspirated engine as far as I'm concerned. And of course, because the only options are we will drive, this car will kick up, especially with traction control off. Even with it on, you will find the rear end coming out on you from time to time. So this car is very, very fast and can get very wily on you. All in all, I think it's just a really nice package that offers a little bit of a reasonable gas mileage in addition to a ton of horsepower, 400 horsepower with only 3,500 pounds. So if you guys are interested in checking out the Nissan Z for your I strongly encourage it. It's a really special car, especially in this day and age, and I think you won't be disappointed. So go to your local Nissan dealership and be sure to check that out. But if you could help us out by throwing a like on this video, we'd really appreciate it. And make sure you get subscribed for more content like this in the future. We've done a ton of reviews on cars just like that. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.